times it's rough And it takes all that you've got But he's been here Just waiting for you to knock To take his hand Welcome to Life on the Rock. Ladies and gentlemen, this is full battle mode we are in right now. My name is Doug Barry. I'm along here with Father Anthony. Father Mark is still away on secret operations for the church. We tell you, but then, of course, well, no, we, we just can't tell you right now where he's at. But, Father, good to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. It's good yeah. to be back again. Yeah, and um, here we are. We are on the doorstep of the election now. So we are in full battle mode. We have all weapons that we need here. And don't worry, it's only plastic. Uh, but it does make the point that we are church militant here. And what that means is that we are battling principalities of darkness. We must be active in that fight. And tonight we've got a great show. We have Matt Warner. He is a blogger. He's a writer. He's also one of these guys that has thrown himself on the hand grenade. And I'll explain that a little more later for the faith. And uh, so we want to talk a little bit here in this first segment, though, about what's coming up in less than a week. Uh, and all, early voting's been going on already all over the country, but uh, the major uh, bulk of it is going to happen on Tuesday, coming up here. Um, this is All Saints Day, which is a great day to discuss uh, the need for us to step up and be saints, right. which we're all called to be. So, uh, you know, Father, uh, here we are, a major election, major things are on the line, and in some ways this country has never, ever had to deal with some of these issues like religious freedom, which seems to not be talked about nearly, it hasn't been talked about nearly as much as it should be. No, they just kind of sneak it in there. But I think last week, Colin Donovan, our Vice President of Theology, mm -hmm. did an excellent job exhorting Catholic faithful on what we need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. um, these uh, non-negotiables, you know, with religious liberty, with life, with the uh, respecting the dignity of marriage or safeguarding the dignity of marriage. And Catholics, especially today, looking at the saints, we have to first pray. We have to pray for our leaders. We have to pray for our nation. And then we have to act. And we have to act with the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, getting out there and living in the truth. Yeah. You know? And we have to be unafraid. Is yes, it saying goes, speak the truth, even if your voice quivers a little yes you know because yeah it's, it can be scary at times and the culture has us in a position now if you think about this father we see this a lot you hear it i know and i hear it when i travel and speak uh you hear it here at dp10 a lot is a lot of people are feeling that pressure that you know how am i supposed to speak out against you know the the attacks on marriage you know against traditional marriage you know the how am i supposed to speak out against these these uh these any of these issues really that are out there my family is turning against me for it. At the workplace, I, I fear for losing my job. I mean, there's a real pressure out there um, that, you know, this intolerance situation, this political correctness situation, and it's, it's, it's overwhelming a lot of people, isn't it? It is, but I think if we're, today we're observing the solemnity of all saints and to look at our brothers and sisters who, for one, died for the faith or just gave themselves so heroically uh, for their love of God mm -hmm. and were willing to... Uh, maybe endure persecution from their families right. or rejection from friends or being looked at somebody that doesn't fit in regular society. Our goal is heaven. That's where our home is. And so we have to speak the language of God, not yeah. the language of man. Yeah. Yeah. After you mentioned about the language, you know, we, we uh, uh, this, this coming weekend, we have a play that we put on um, uh, in, in, our, in our neighborhood and um, uh, homeschool kids get together and some other Catholic youth get together and and my wife was reading to me, and it's about Bernadette this year, and my wife was reading to me some of these great quotes um, regarding Bernadette's conversation with our Blessed Mother and Lords, France, in uh, 1858, when Our Lady appeared to her. And she said that Bernadette was taken to a place where the language is prayer. 
And that's a beautiful statement. The yeah. language is prayer. It's a place where the language is prayer. It's a, it, kind of that transition between where we're at here in this earth yeah. and the heavens themselves. Um, and that's where we need to go, all of us, every day in some way, shape, or form. We need to have that language, uh, that go to that place where the language is prayer. And be close to Christ, especially, and I mean this, especially when you don't feel Him. When you don't sense a presence of God. So, you know, I, I can be in the room you know, and not talk to my wife, but if she's in the room, I, I sense her presence. I know she's there. She, I, I'm closer to nobody on this planet than my wife and, 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 you know, my love for her, you know, I just sense her presence. But sometimes God remains strangely quiet. He right, kind right. of pulls back. He doesn't leave us, but he pulls back to kind of, what, test us maybe? Sure. Yeah. Um, and aren't those the most critical times to really dig deep and, and grasp that sword <laughs> and and hang in there. Sure, absolutely. Dig, in, dig into that foxhole yeah. and don't don't leave your position. Sure. Jim and Joy Pinto, who do a radio program each week or every day uh, here on EWTN, uh, Joy said recently in a, a conference, "I love for my faith to be dashed because heaven is watching and hell is watching mm -hmm. to see if we'll get back up." And she said, "It's our faith." that gets us to stand back up and we continue to walk that walk. Yeah, that's awesome. And Catholics have to have that, well, Catholic Christians have to have that uh, strength and that fervor right. you know, in their belief. Right. Well, here we are uh, on this day. Uh, we are remembering our brothers and sisters who have, who have done their part to save the world at their time, save the world for Christ, meaning that they, they followed the Great Commission in Matthew 28 to go out and teach all nations, baptize all nations, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe everything that Christ has commanded us. Observe everything that Christ has commanded us. That is the Great Commission we are all called to do. This isn't just the priests and the bishops. This is me as a layman and, and, and anybody and everybody out there yeah. called to be part of this Great Commission, to save the world for Christ by His grace, of course, not on our own. We can't do it on our own. But we have to use our time, our treasure, our talents for our time, our generation, because generations to come whether they know it or not, because they're not even here yet, <laughs> are counting on what we do today. Just like the saints we are, we are remembering now, I mean, we're counting on what they did. We're standing on their shoulders. Absolutely. That's fantastic to think about. Yeah. So Tuesday with the election coming up, let's do something saintly. Let's be willing to take the shot if we have to, the persecution, the, the criticism from others, and let's make sure we vote the, the well-formed Catholic conscience, the well-formed conscience which is pleasing to God, which honors God, Let's make that first and foremost, everybody. And let's remember, it begins with prayer, as Father mentioned. Deep prayer and then heroic action. But it starts with deep prayer. So don't go away. We're going to be back after this break with Matt Warner. And we're going to be talking about some powerful things in Catholic media and communication and how we are all part of this. So be back after this. Don't go away. We're back, live from the Rock here. You're in the Rock House, Rock House Compadres. We actually have a temporary filming compadre, but you come regularly, you know, whenever Father Mark's on special covert operations, <laughs> or if I don't make it because of a plane flight problem or something, yeah. you are the, uh, you're, you're the uh, backup. Yeah, it's been a while. Compadre. Kind of got the place dusted up here. Yeah, <laughs> it was getting kind of grimy, you know, with Father Mark. I mean, I don't know where to take care of it. But, uh, but anyway, we have a great show tonight. We have uh, Matt Warner. Matt Warner is um, one of these guys. I'll explain a little bit more later what I meant about falling on the landmine or jumping on the hand grenade. Excuse me, jumping on the hand grenade. Um, but Matt Warner is a blogger. Matt Warner is, um, well, he's an all-around genius. We'll just call him Matt. Okay, I'm sure his <laughs> wife right now is, oh, yeah. Uh, just nodding on that one. Yeah, so, right, yeah. Matt, good to have you on the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, good to have you here. This show, very, very important to us because it's a show right before the big election coming up where we're going to make some big decisions, you know, for our country. Um, and it's interesting because we're going to talk a lot about communication tonight. And, of course, with the election here right around the corner, communication has, you know, been, you know, what do you want to call it, 100% genuine <laughs> or not, but uh, we are a nation 
a world now that is just inundated with communication. Um, I mean, the technology, the, it's, 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 it's everything to us. It's our cell phones, our iPhones, what have you, our iPads, our computers. Uh, sm I expect a small chip to be implanted in the head that's just going to be um, giving us our emails through some sort of uh, audio mental, you know, <laughs> synopsis. Way, yeah. yeah, you know. I mean, it's just incredible where things are at. But you are someone who really kind of is an expert in the field of getting into communication and, and the importance of it. But before we get into that, you, before, you're, before you are that, you are a Catholic husband and father. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about your past, about your, your family, and uh, tell us about your wife and amazing children and all that. Sure, yeah, I have a beautiful wife, Lauren, at home with our three kids. Uh, we just had our latest, uh, Sarah Claire, who was born about two months ago. Yeah. So she's uh, missing me right now, I'm sure. <laughs> three, <laughs> three little ones to track down all night. But, um, but no, yeah, I, I have, I'm very blessed, um, have a, a wonderful family. I, I grew up Catholic, um, going to Mass. Uh, my parents really taught me the importance of our faith, um, the importance of uh, having a relationship with God and, and all of those things. Um, but I think like a lot of kids and a lot of people, I, I didn't really, you, know, you don't really ask yourself a lot of the serious questions or really contemplate how important your faith is until you really get a little bit older. Um, and for me, that happened after I got out of college. You know, I, went, I was always good about going to Mass. Um, but I never really knew why I was Catholic, you know, and, and through a series of, of um, a couple of, you know, serious dating relationships, you know, once you get to that age, you start talking about marriage and things like that, and, and none of them were Catholic. And, um, and so you start talking about, well, what, what religion will we be, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Awkward moment. Yeah, it's like, well, I just assume we'd be Catholic. I'm Catholic. You're going to be Catholic, right? Well, no. And, but of course, it's a silly thing to expect of somebody, but mm -hmm. you don't really think through that very much. I think a lot of people get through that. And I realized that I don't have a good reason to tell you why you should be Catholic, because I can't even tell you why I'm Catholic. Um, and so it kind of put me into a, not a crisis, but um, it motivated me to want to wanna learn about my faith more. Um, and so those relationships ended uh, and significantly for those reasons, um, but for other things too. And I think God was leading me different places, but I just for whatever reason started getting involved at my parish and um, because I wanted, to, I wanted to, to volunteer there. I had actually, through high school, I played in a band for one of those mega non-denominational churches. Ah. <laughs> so I, was, I, I went to mass early in the morning and then I'd go play at a Sunday service for like 400 youth kids Wow. Uh, this massive church and they were still like just starting you know they're one of the ones on tv now um so i when i was young i got exposed to um obviously they don't have what we have in the church with the sacraments and everything like that but i got exposed to um good leadership for the, a lot of their programs and good marketing i think mm -hmm. and a lot of that is good communication um, you know, communicating something in a way that's attractive to people. And people are attracted to the truth, um, ultimately, but you have to meet them where they're at. Uh, lots of things like that, but even just running things well, having something that really entertaining is not, not that mass should be entertaining, but having our programs, having uh, our, the way we reach people be entertaining, that value is, is a good thing. Something, it's something that engages people. Exactly. To help so, them have an experience. Right. Yeah. And so that was kind of something when I started getting involved in our parish, I started s seeing the potential for what we could do with our youth program. Because not only could we do everything that this other, these mega churches and those things were doing so successfully, but we had so much more to offer. And we had the fullness of the truth to offer. We had the sacraments to offer. I mean, all these things in our favor, but yet we're failing so miserably so many times to get something going, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think a lot of that comes back to, I mean, communication in a general sense, but, uh, you know, because communication should always lead to communion. And I think that, you know, they're related. That's the, that's the goal of it, of communicating truth in a clear way. It leads to communion because that's a common ground for everybody. And I think that's such a core part of the mission of the church. And I think that we've been, done a really bad job of communicating the wonderful things that we do as a church and um, what we have to offer to people, which mm -hmm. is the ultimate um, prize. Now, earlier I said in the first segment that you're one of these guys that I look at as a guy who's throwing yourself on the hand grenade. And what I mean by that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a strange term uh, for some people. It's like, why is he talking about grenades? You know? But the reason I bring it up is because 
nobody questions the loyalty and sincerity of a person who's willing to throw himself on a grenade to save the lives of those around him. You know, many of the Medal, Honor, Medal of Honor recipients in recent years um, are guys who did things just like that, whether they, you know, got in front of a machine gun nest and, and you think of the grunt padre, uh, Father Vincent Capadano, who his cause is up for beatification. And he was on a battlefield uh, and he was giving last rites to men and there was a machine gun nest so many yards away and he went and put his body between the machine gun nest and the, the man he was giving last rites to took 27 bullets in his back. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody questions a person's loyalty for that or for jumping on a hand grenade. You, and again, this is not to flatter you, but I think it's important because we need to be inspired by these things. Other men out there who are watching right now, you need to be inspired and realize that it's not enough just to give that 10%. In fact, I don't think that's anywhere in scripture, actually. Okay, the tithing at 10%. In fact, I think our Lord is more clear about, um, oh yeah, everything. <laughs> First Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God, everything. Now, what does that mean for you, for me? It's gonna take various forms, but deep prayer has to be part of those decisions. You, in prayer, felt like something was missing. I wanna unpack this a bit throughout the show, but you had a job as an engineer at Lockheed Martin. So you're involved in building these super gadgets that's so top secret you can't tell anybody about it or you'd have to kill us all. Is that kind of how it goes? Yeah, I'm not obligated to kill you. Yeah, but, <laughs> 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 but you might anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, but you were an engineer at Lockheed Martin. I mean, that position right there says, okay, the guy's got brains, the guy's got ability, and the guy's probably making a decent, decent pay to take care of his family. And something in your heart said, okay, that's nice, but something about the faith. Take it from there. What made you throw yourself on the hand grenade to leave Lockheed Martin and do Catholic work? Sure. Well, you make me sound a lot cooler than I am, so I appreciate it. No, no, we got to inspire the troops out there. Yeah. But it's true. Um, you did do well, that. Well, yeah, in a way, I think, um, although I probably didn't do it for as noble reasons as I wish I would have, but, but I think God works through that. You know, he works our imperfections if we let him. And, um, you know, I think for me, it, like I said, I started getting more on fire for my faith. I was working. I loved my job. It was a great job. It was challenging. I got to work on really cool stuff. Um, it provided for my family in a great way. Um, but, uh, you know, I started getting more on fire for my faith. I started asking those questions. I started picking up books, and I was like, why did I never see this before? And I'm sure people were telling me it. It's just I wasn't ready to receive it yet. And I just I caught on fire for our faith. And so I wanted to help solve these problems for our church. Um, you know, I had done a lot of uh, my career was in technology, computers, engineering. Um, and I actually, while I was at Lockheed, I got my MBA in entrepreneurship. So I, I, I wanted to do something on my own as well. Like I, I, I wanted to start something. I wanted to do it because I really, uh, as much as I liked working for, for Lockheed, it was a big corporate environment. And I really wanted something, you know, just my personality mm -hmm. to, when I go do it, there's the results, you know. Right. And um, so that was, I wanted to do something, but that translated to all of a sudden, I wanted to do something for the church. But of course, you have to, you know, try to have a business that you can support and sustain, um, whether it's nonprofit or for profit or whatever, it has to be sustainable. So you have to find ways to that support it and everything else one way or another. So this whole, you know, business model, whatever you call it, you know, I was trying to develop for how we could help the church communicate more effectively. Um, and so, you know, eventually I was working so much that my wife um, got annoyed. <laughs> and she said with her blessing and, and God bless her for it, you know, she said, just quit your job. And so she gave me that final push um, that said, you know, and ultimately it's one of those things, you know, you pray a lot about and, you know, God's kind of put all these things gradually in place. And he has people in your life, like your wife, that that help support you, whether or not you're doing something right or mm. no, that's stupid. Knock it off. <laughs> and um, and so but she was able to give me that support. And um you know, you only live once and, you know, if you're not going to live it for God, then, you know, mm. you're just, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. And, um, so it just, all those things came together and, uh, it just made for a really exciting, uh, adventure. <laughs> and the seeds were planted, uh, and communication, of course, being such an important thing. Um, and I know we're getting into this a little bit more as the show goes on here, um, about communication and, and, you know, just how many people are just inundated with these things, you know, with the cell phone and, you know, I get that strange little 
You know, and you can even pick your own sound that you want. I have teleportation sound, <laughs> right? It could be bells and whistles. It could be a foghorn. It could be an air raid siren. Anytime I get an email comes in on my phone or a text message, you know, oh, oh, and everybody's doing it. In fact, I was uh, giving hay rack rides out of Camp Gargano uh, a few weeks ago. Teenage youth group is out there. And it's nighttime, and I'm driving in the tractor, a little small tractor with a hay rack attached to the back. I'm thinking, these kids are really, oh, they're enjoying it. It's a cool evening out here in Nebraska. <laughs> I look behind me, seven or eight of them out of the 12 or so on the hay rack are all looking at their phone. See the lights of all their phones. <laughs> there was seven, eight of them easily. And I just thought, there, there it is right there. It's, 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 the, it's the age that we live in. The yeah. technology, the communication potential is huge. And as... Catholic Church, we're not, uh, we're not where we could be. We're doing better, aren't we? Sure. No, we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. And, um, but we need more you know, guys the like you. Move slowly. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And sometimes wisely so. Vatican time. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, but they've been, they've been uh, I mean, every year Pope Benedict comes out and is talking about things that are so relevant. I mean, every day is World Communications Day message is just spot on. And I think that's, it's a perfect example of how the church, for as much as the church is a little behind in embracing their late adopters for the actual technology, in terms of the wisdom mm. on approaching how to use them in a healthy way that's really powerful and effective, I mean, they've been teaching this stuff for centuries, yeah, you know? that's true. And so there's so much I think the church has to offer the communication world, if you will, the industry, the, the movement, the revolution, um, that they're not yet contributing um, in a really powerful way. And I think it starts with Catholics being out there using it in a powerful and proper way. Yeah, and we've got to not be afraid to do what you've done, what Mother Angelica did 30 plus years ago, uh, and, and respond to the seed that God puts in your heart. Some of you out there, look, we've all got time, treasure, and talent to some degree. Some of you out there might be thinking to yourself, yeah, you know what, I could give a little more. I could do a bit more with my time, my treasure, my talent. But maybe you're afraid. You know, Mother herself said that she didn't think she was the first one God asked to start this network. She thought God asked others to start it, but they didn't for distraction or fears or whatever else. Don't be afraid. Have a little courage. You know, step up and get involved in this. It is a fight, and there are souls at stake. And as Matt just said, you know, living once. If we're not living for God, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do for the glory of God. If not, what are we doing? So let's get busy. All right, we'll take a break. We're back with more from Matt Warner after this. Don't go away. All right. We're back, and you're back with us, and you know that, otherwise you wouldn't be hearing me say that. We have with us Matt Warner. Matt Warner is a Lockheed engineer who has had a major conversion. <laughs> Actually, in all honesty, you, were, you, were, you and I were talking right before the show uh, a little bit here about the fact that we, we're kind of like the majority of a lot of Catholics out there who were born and raised you know, Father, you, you know this too. I mean, we have the great stories of the great conversions, the, you know, like Scott Hahn. It's a great story, and they are powerful, you know. And, you know, or Jeff Cavins, who was in the faith, left and came back, challenged the bishop and so forth. And I don't challenge you. And you know what? I, I didn't do that. You didn't do that. But, yeah, I think most of us are like us, where you were kind of born and raised Catholic, went through the motions, kind of, I call it the clock in, clock out. You put your hand in the holy water font, and you clock in when you go to Mass, and you clock out when you leave Mass, and that's kind of it. That's where I was at. But then something has touched your heart. Um, sure. And now you write, you use your skills as a writer and such to do a lot of things. And before we get into the big thing that you created, you um, are a blogger. You have your own, tell us about your own blog page and also the fact that you are connected to EWTN in a very mysterious and roundabout secretive way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, I think, I think everybody, has, it's different for every. I think, like you said, the, there's a huge, I think, one of the greatest assets in the Catholic Church right now that it has working for it that we're not utilizing or, or going after or taking advantage of is tens of millions of Catholics that are falling away or 
are showing up, but just not engaged. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't they don't understand their faith completely to get excited about it. You know, and it's different for lots of people. Uh, everyone has something different. You know, you had something different that got you excited about your faith. For me, being an engineer, um, it was you know apologetics. It was learning that there was a rational intellectual depth to why we believe what we believe. And um, I'm putting my hand up now as I start talking. So my, my wife, my wife gets mad at me when I start doing that. She knows she just starts tuning out. It means I'm starting to pontificate about something. But I'll try to keep them, keep them down. Um, <laughs> but that, you know, that's but, a great point. You know, Matt, that's, no, no, just get, get, get crazy. We're in the rock house. I use my hands. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, the, you, the, you, that's a good point. Cause for me, as I told you, you know, before my little story was Fatima and I had, you know, 19, 20 years old, heard about our lady Fatima. And it was very clear fear of chastisements and hell. And not just for myself, but realizing that the world wasn't knowing this. And yet she came not of her own power, but by God's power to tell the world yeah. there'll be a second war if you don't convert. There was. Russia will spread the air of her ways. Russia has. We're dealing with it now. Communism, socialism, the whole atheistic, you know, government approach. So for me, it was it was a more of a dramatic thing. For you, right. it was more intellectual. Yeah. With and for oh. me, like I, as a rational, scientific-minded yeah. person, yeah. I would have looked at that and gone, "Oh, it's just superstition. There's no way that's true." Now you look into it and you're like, "Okay, there's something to that." But to even get to the point where you're open-minded about something like that, for someone like me, sure. took a different process. And everyone's different. That's what's great about individual relationships and evangelization. And that's yeah. why the great evangel happens with individuals going out and making those connections and for me it was a guy at my youth ministry who volunteered who gave me a book and said check this book out and for me it was just the right book that just explained the faith and showed that okay there's a reason why we believe all these things it's not just because I was raised this way and my parents were raised this way and we just happen to believe this stuff but there's rational intellectual depth to it and it just blew my mind and I just started sucking it up and I just it just caught fire from there, you know, and from there it started to have um, good or bad, a kind of pride for my church that said, look, why is our faith who has so much reason and beauty and treasure to it um, not being shared more effectively? You know, why is it not presented more effectively? And so I saw this huge opportunity with, um, you know, with new media, with social media, this revolution in the way people are connected and communicating that allows, rather than just this broadcast approach, it allows, it allows a relationship to occur now. You can have a back and forth, you can have a listening, you can be more personal, and that's so much more powerful mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're talking about evangelization. And so I got into blogging, um, partially because it was a way for me to vent and talk about things, whether it was politics or faith or whatever where people didn't have to listen to me, but, but, but they could if they wanted to, which is a safer way to do it sometimes. But um, uh, it started out as that, and eventually, you know, it just kind of took off from there. And eventually, um, a place called the National Catholic Register contacted me and, and said, would you like to blog for us? You know, we like what you're doing, I guess. And, and I was so humbled by it because somehow I ended up next to all these other amazing bloggers there that are way better than I am. But um, so it's, it's very humbling to be a part of it, but very cool um, to see what they're doing there sure. at the National Catholic Register, which is now a part of EWTN, which has been awesome. Yeah. Um, now, w real quick on blogging, for the audience out there listening or watching, um, you know, we're calling it, you know, blogging. You're a blogger. Uh, it, it, it has taken on this whole life of its own. <laughs> what is a blog? B-L-O-G. <laughs> well, a blog is, is, I mean, it's kind of just a, it's a running, it's like just small posts, you know, it's, it's, it's a running daily update, or not even daily, it's just, it's just short updates, less formal than like what you would think of as an article on a, on a newspaper mm -hmm. or website, you know. Um, and so it's, it's become a phenomenon on its own. I mean, most people are familiar with them now, they probably follow a lot of blogs, but you know, the difference with a blog than from, you know, traditional media, whether it's print or online, um, is really something that you know they've I think they've gotten really well at the National Catholic Register that's done really well there but it's just it's the idea that new media is different than old media you can't just convert it from you know print to online it's now electronic now you can read it on a website rather than in a paper it's a really a different way to interact with it it's more personal um, it's more uh, casual uh, which is, makes it more personal a lot you know so I have followers well I you know 
a hundred bloggers are reaching more than one big newspaper is, but they're reaching them all individually, which mm -hmm. is a much more effective way through relationships, you know, um, being able to be more on their level in the sense of this is who I am, it's more personal, you're sharing opinion, you're giving an angle, people like that. And because they know where you're coming from, you know, rather than watching the news a lot of times where you know, they're coming from somewhere, it's just not obvious, you know. <laughs> they have an agenda one way or the other. But, um, but I think people really appreciate in this day and age someone who just is giving their opinion. They can take it for what it is and they can interact. And that's the best, that's another you know, aspect of blogging is the interaction. It doesn't just stop with the post. I mean, most right. of the posts on my blog, the value is down below it. It's in the conversation that happens after it. I sure. mean, a lot of the commenters are smarter than I am on a lot of the things I'm writing about, but it's a way to start a conversation. Hold on, a lot of the commenters work for Lockheed Martin? <laughs> <laughs> Some of them do, I'm sure. <laughs> No, I'm just giving you a hard but, time. <laughs> <laughs> they're smarter than me about a lot of the things I'm talking about, sure, but sure. that's the great part about it, yeah. is you can, you can read down there and learn other people's perspectives and fill in gaps and have a conversation and people can contribute to it mm. and they feel a part of it and and now you have a relationship there and and now they're more open to your point of view and you can dialogue and and so it's just such a powerful way to to communicate and therefore to evangelize and build relationships yeah. with and people. matt they find you where they would just go to the national catholic register website yeah i blog on the national catholic register yeah if you go over you can see all the bloggers over on the right side so you'll, you'll see me over there at ncregister.com but you also have another blog page. Yeah, my, my personal blog is, is fallibleblogma.com. Fallible Blogma, which is a yep. play off of... Yeah, it's kind of the opposite of infallible dogma. If you can that's get as opposite creative. as possible to infallible dogma, that's, that's my blog. Now, he did admit, we were trying to get him to admit that his wife came up with the name. But, you know, we know that you, uh, you created this. That's very, that's very ingenious. Yeah. 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 So you, you got this blogging going on. You're a blogger. Um, I mean, it's, it's a whole world in and of itself, but it's just not enough for you. Something else has to happen, <laughs> all right? And so you've created, you talked earlier about getting your hands on something that really had, you know, your personality to it, your God-given talents and gifts involved in it. Um, what did you create? Well, I ended up creating flocknote.com. Um, and yeah, I mean, it came from, you know, blogging and so personal use of social media, uh, Twitter and Facebook and all that um, is a great way for personal evangelization, I think. And it's a great way for, for organizations as well. But I think I wanted to find some really practical ways that we could move the church, the institution, the parish, the schools, mm -hmm. the diocese, the organizations that make up the structure of the church, where the rubber meets the road, where the people are interacting, help them take a step forward with utilizing new media, which new media is online, digital websites, new communication technologies, email, texting, social media, all those things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're trying a lot of them, you know, but I wanted to give it a really simple, practical path, you know, and so what are some easy steps we can take? Because if you try to do too much in a too complex of a way, um, it just doesn't happen when you're dealing with big organizations. And I think too often with the church, we, because we're a universal church, we think that everything we do has to reach absolutely everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and every each little individual thing has to reach everybody. And of course, there's nothing that really does that. Um, and 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 because we have lots of complex problems, we try to find one solution that's going to fix all of them, and it just becomes too complex. And I think we've tried to, uh, that approach in a number of ways with new technologies and software and things, right down to the parish level and on up. Um, and so it, it just doesn't work. That's why we're not utilizing hardly any of those things very effectively, even though they've been tried in lots of ways. And so we want to come up with just some simple ways. And Flocknote focuses on, you know, simple email newsletter lists, text message update lists. Um, it does phone calls for you and integrates with social media too. But it really focuses on those two things and making it easy for a parish and organizations like them to just build those things and use them. And so we make it really easy to do that so you'll actually do that. So the parish workers will actually use it okay, and it's so actually helpful for This them. is for parishes, schools, businesses. Sure. Um, basically it's, um, it's, it's, it's email uh, blasts to texts to phone calls to, right. I mean, it's all integrated together. Right. So you post in one place and it's going to 
send email to people who need, need email, uh, send a text message to people who want a text message, uh, make a phone call to people who don't have email addresses or, or text messages. And it'll actually, yet. they'll answer, hello, it'll, it'll hello, call them someone it'll, there? It'll talk yeah. to them. <laughs> yeah, we're from Flock Note, and we have a message for you. Yeah, and well, then it'll, it'll say from St. Mary's Catholic Church, okay. you know, whatever. Uh, oh, God, um, okay. So right. Yeah, Flock Note gets out of the way. Um, but, you know, really, we, we focus on things like texting and email primarily. Um, because if, if you're a member of an organization and you really want information from that, from that organization, email and texting are the number one ways to get it. You, you want to be present on social media, but I think for so many organizations in the church, it becomes a distraction right now. Well, like I go around talking about it's important to do that. It's important. We do conferences on how important it is to use social media and all that stuff, but I think it becomes a distraction when they try to do too many things at once and they don't even have a basic email list working yet. Mm. And most parishioners just aren't there yet on a lot of social media platforms. But, but also social media is more of a communal, um, indirect kind of way to um, you know, build your community. And um, email, texting are, are the ways people get stuff directly to them electronically sure. now. And it's so easy and it will save our parishes and all the other institutions in our church money it will make them more efficient it'll save them headaches but and so many of them are, are they don't want to make the change because right. change is scary yeah it takes some effort but there know? there are people that just are not being reached in, in your parish or in your school or in your organization you, you're not reaching everybody as thoroughly and as consistently reliably as you could and that's why something like this is so important and so powerful we've got to keep up with this we've got to be able to engage the culture john paul ii said that all the time engage the culture don't run for the hills. Don't bury your head in a Christian sandbox. Don't go hide in a cave. Okay, the more we do that, the more society, you know, the godless side of society is going to run us over and a and, uh, lot more damage. Uh, we have a video uh, we're going to see, a short video yeah. on flock notes. Yeah, flock note. Yeah, flock note. Yeah, flock note. Video on flock note. Check this out. You're going to love it. Parishes need an easy way to connect and communicate with people. The best way to do that is to leverage how people are already communicating. But how can an organization manage all of these different forms of communication? Introducing Flocknote, a communication and registration tool made specifically for Catholic parishes, dioceses, and organizations. Flocknote allows parish leadership to create and manage as many distribution lists as you need for all of your activities and ministries. It also gives you an easy way to gather custom information from your parishioners and then lets them subscribe to only the information that they want to receive in the way that they want to receive it. You can send quick short announcements or long beautiful newsletters, even track stats, manage events, take surveys, attach files, and schedule notes for later. And then Flocknote delivers it all to your flock via bulk email, text messages, Facebook, Twitter, phone calls, and more, all from one easy place. It does a lot of other things too, like letting you import your existing email lists right into Flocknote, or even allowing parishioners to register and subscribe to your lists all via text message. And all of this makes for effective communication and happy parishioners. And it empowers your parish leaders to focus more on their ministry while equipping them with the communication tools that they need. All in one place, all on Flocknote.com. Good stuff. Excellent stuff. Uh, we're going to take a break here and come back and get more into that and let people know how you can get a hold of Flock Note for your parish, uh, school organization. In fact, I think the State Department's going to be looking into this too pretty soon. So <laughs> we'll be back after this break. Don't go away, everybody. We're back, and so are you, and we appreciate that very much. Uh, this is the final segment here, Matt. This is where we let the world have it. We got a, actually, we got a big election coming up uh, real soon. This is All Saints Day. We're celebrating. Talk about the saints. If they'd have had this, you know, from St. Anthony's time, St. Francis, St. Paul would have 
oh, jumped yeah. all over this. No question. I mean, because yeah. they, they understood the need to communicate. Just during the break there, you were saying something that was very, very, very good, very powerful, is that, um, you know, having the access to, to reach a lot of people is great, but unless you got a message that really gets to the heart, um, it, what, what's it all about then? Tell us sure. what you meant by that. Yeah, well, I think one of the things we run into is, you know, a lot of parishes, other organizations in the church, you know, they're like, people don't want to listen to us. They won't read our emails. They won't go check our website, those kind of things. And so, I mean, having effective communication tools, using other social media, using the, their, you know, communicating the way they want to hear it is important, you know. So having those things um, are going to help if you have something that they want to hear. And I think that, you know, technology is 10% of it. So, I mean, getting something like Flocknote or getting some sort of other technology communication tool, you know, definitely you got to do it. And I, I hope you do. But, um, <laughs> but it's not going to, it's not going to all of a sudden make what you're saying interesting or helpful or mm. inspiring. Um, and I think that's what we miss a lot in the church is that a lot of us are just saying really boring things. And it may be interesting to us personally, but it comes off as boring to other people. And, um, and so we have to find things that, that not just, it's not, it's not about stimulation and entertainment, although those should and can be part of it, but because there's things about the truth that are entertaining and stimulating and all those things, if you present them the right way. Um, but ultimately, you know, you have to have something that gets people up. And it, if you have something that's inspiring enough, it doesn't matter how you're communicating. People are going to be coming to you and saying, how can I find out more? How can I give you money? Right. How can I get more involved? And I think the church, I mean, even, even your most boring, inactive parish somewhere that doesn't do anything that well, right, <laughs> still has not only the sacraments, which are amazing enough story in themselves to be powerfully inspiring if you talk about them the right way, mm -hmm. but the stories that are going on there, the conversions, the people's lives that are changing are there. It's just we don't talk about them, you know? Every year, you know, a lot of parishes just get a spreadsheet that tells you, here's what we did with your money this year, <laughs> you know? And so for, for the 95% of the people in the parish that all they do is show up on Sundays and a chunk of them give money and most of them don't yet, um, they're going, yeah, I want to give money to this spreadsheet, you know, that's inspiring <laughs> me, to, it's moving me to give money, you know? So sure. rather than like making people feel guilty to give money 10% or whatever, um, we have so many ways to inspire them to give but we're not telling those stories, I think. And so if, you, if instead of that spreadsheet, you had a video of somebody that said, my life was changed by this program you provided me. My family's um, the Christmas experience completely um, you know, just changed our lives because of what you guys did for us. Um, the sacrament of confession, I just came back after 20 years because of this program at your parish, you know, mm -hmm. that what you provided me. You tell those stories and all of a sudden people are like, okay, I want to give more to that. How can I do sure. more of that? How can we multiply that? And those are happening at parishes. We're just not telling that story. And it's really marketing. That's what it is. Yeah, it makes and, me, go ahead. No, I mean, and so I think what, what new media gives us the opportunity to do is to tell those stories in ways we were never able to tell them yeah. before. It's so easy. You walk up to somebody after they get baptized and turn on your phone and take a quick video and ask them a question. And two minutes later, it can be on your website or emailed out to the entire parish so they can all share in that hmm. and experience it. Yeah. It's that easy. It doesn't have to be complex and it doesn't have to cost you hardly any money to do it. And everybody's got a camera. Sure. on their phone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and they can send it out through Flocknote. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, it makes me think about, um, I think it was St. Alphonsus Liguori who said that, you know, the mouth speaks to the ear, but the heart speaks to the heart. And you're, you're talking about stories of the heart and everybody has the ability to inspire somebody else, I believe. And I think, you know, I mean, that is really the key. What, what makes you get up in the morning is you have to be inspired you know, whether it's I've got to feed my kids, whether it's I've got to, I've got to run to school, I've got to work. I've, there's something that inspires you to move. And uh, if we're going to be moving people closer to Christ, we've got to be more clever in the way we inspire. I want to get into something else here. we got just about eight minutes left here in the show. Um, I started something recently called Battle Ready. Battle Ready is an email I send out pretty much every day, a little video, odd video that comes out once in a while as well. Battle Ready was created, the idea, and I want you all out there, especially you men, to sign up for Battle Ready. Go to my website, RadixGuys.com or CampGargano.com and click on the Join Now and just give me your email. Okay, it's not going to be sold or anything. We're not going to rent it out. 
Basically, you're going to get an email almost every day and a video, and everybody in the ranks of Battle Ready pray for each other, which we encourage, and everybody in Battle Ready gets uh, one mass a month offered for them. Now, my point behind this is, and I want to plug that and encourage that, because it's to try to help people, try to help men, because in my travels, I get a lot of guys come up to me and say, hey, you know, some encouragement. I feel alone a lot of times. Guys don't talk about spiritual matters nearly as much as women do. And so guys are out there, hey, man, you know, I was praying yesterday. Really? Okay, that's kind of weird. Can we talk about football, please? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's uncomfortable for a lot of guys, which is sad because, you know, it's a different type of spiritual life in the sense of women have that nurturing, men have that protection and, and fighting spirit and so forth. But my point is this, and I want to ask you this question, the more challenging is, I'm up late at night sometimes writing up my next battle ready, thinking of the next presentation, how I'm going to do this. What drives me? As I'm sitting there late at night is knowing that there's this guy, there's, there's, there's Troy or there's, there's, uh, there's, there's Tom or there's Bill or there's, there's you know, David or whoever these guys are that I know by name or communication through emails who are actually benefiting from this. And I know their husbands, their fathers or their priests or their seminarians or their college guys or their high school guys. And they're looking for something. So that drives me, right? Keeps me going. Okay agonizingly at times thinking I want to help by the grace of God whatever talents I have you know numbskull that I am how do I get this you know what drives you <laughs> you're you're the engine I'm more dramatic and animated you know it's more my nature you know but you are a, a, a thinker but you got to have these moments I mean you don't just throw yourself on that hand grenade like you did leave Lockheed Martin and start <laughs> this if something down inside a of you, Matt, doesn't just kind of burn like Jeremiah, like fire in my heart and prison in my bones. Yeah. You know, tell the world, what is it? <laughs> because other guys are going to be inspired by this because we need more men on this battlefield doing these things. Yeah, no, I need the, I need the sword. Yeah. <laughs> the sword. Oh, you need it, yeah. Can, like, we get, <laughs> yeah. Um, Can you get him the sword, please? Is, like, <laughs> <laughs> make me, make me fear, feel more uh, yeah. inspiring when I say this. No. Uh. <laughs> okay, we're getting the sword for okay, you right yeah, now. Little. Yeah, we got to have this in the shot. Because your wife's watching. There we go. All right. Tell us, Matt. Tell the world. like I'm sharpening it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, um, William Wallace. <laughs> what would you do without freedom? I, I think for me, it's... it's um, it just seems like such a tragedy to see people not benefiting from what the church has to offer. You see people in your life that suffer for so many different reasons. And not that being, you know, not that, you know, you know, not that your faith gets rid of suffering at all, sure. you know. It just turns it into something that sanctifies you, you know. It gives it value. And, um, and so to see people, so many people around, not just, I mean, friends, I mean, everyone knows people in their life, but just the culture in general that, that doesn't value suffering the way it could be valued. Um, you just, and, in, 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 and as a result, is not benefiting from the trials they're going from. They're, they're being pushed further away from God. They're being twisted. You know, we got this election coming up. Mm. Um, you know, and I think regardless of, I mean, the election matters a lot. You know, lives literally weigh in the balance right. of who wins, right. literally. But um, regardless of who wins, there's, there's a spiritual crisis in the country because I th in most people voting one way or the other are not voting, I think, to uphold the right moral truths and principles that mm -hmm. really we should be protecting and voting for. Um, and I think that a lot of the people who are voting even for them don't understand why they, they uh, believe them in the first place. And they're just basically future converts to the other side, I think, because they're going to get worn down eventually by this culture if we don't step in and give them the, the tools they need to defend it, the reason, the intellectual reasoning behind it, the inspiration, the, the faith, um, all of those things that are a part of our Catholic faith that are just tools there waiting for people to inspire them, to really move them, and to give them that ultimate reason for what they're doing in life. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, you don't have to quit your job to live a, a radical life, you know, for God. Um, and most people are not called to do that. And, you know, it's great when you get those, you know, you know you're helping somebody directly because they got this and they were immediately moved by it. And I get that a lot with blogging, which is an amazing gift to have someone email you and say, 
I stayed Catholic because of you, or something, not because of me, but because of God, because of something I happened to write and sure. they just moved him in the right moment. But a lot, most of our life is not like that. Most of our life is just you're faithful and you don't always see those results right away. Um, but you know you have the peace no matter what happens that God's doing something in it and he has a much bigger, grander plan of it all that is going to all come together because we've already won. And I think that's another thing to remember with this election time too, no matter what happens, is that we've already won. Um, and because of that, we, have a, we can go forward fighting these battles. And they are battles and we do have to fight, but we can do it with joy and with hope and in a way that ultimately will be the difference in winning. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. So we know what makes you tick a little now when you're up at midnight or one or two and you're thinking <laughs> and you're pondering and your wife says, come to bed, I can't sleep. <laughs> Something's burning inside of me and it is that <laughs> the people out there are not getting the information that they need. The sword, yeah, yeah. It's plastic, but you know, don't well, let me bring a real one on. Symbolic. Yeah, it <laughs> makes the point, it makes the point. Okay, so real quick, what do they gotta do to get to Flocknote to, to get this set up with their parish, their, their, their business, their whatever? Yeah, just go to flocknote.com. I think it'll be on the screen there. Okay. And uh, you get a free trial, you can try it for 30 days and uh, see how well it helps you. Excellent, all right. Hope we get started. Great job, I'm Thanks so thankful so you came on the show. Keep yeah. up, keep up the good work. And don't forget everybody out there, um, sign up for Battle Ready, go to campgargano.com or radixguys.com, click join now, and get yourself on the Battle Ready ranks. Mass said for you, praying for one another. Like Matt, we're out there on the battlefield together. Tuesday, vote the well-formed Catholic conscience. Do what is right in the eyes of God, first and foremost. May all the holy men and women of heaven, the saints, pray for us. Father, take us out as only you can. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you, show his face to you and be merciful to you, turn his countenance to you and give you peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.